circuit schematics are very nice things. All these components in a lovely two-dimensional world with perfect connections and ideal placement. Isn't that a nice idea? But eventually, we have to make them real. And in reality, a circuit usually exists on some type of circuit board, like, say, a breadboard, for example. Breadboards offer the most flexible way to assemble a circuit. Build it, change it, scrap it. All good, breadboard don't mind at all. And that's because they don't require any soldering. Beneath all those holes, a breadboard houses an army of springy metal clips which hold component leads in place while providing electrical connections between them. Though you may want to avoid taking one apart. When we place a component on a breadboard, we're essentially wiring it into one of those internally connected rows. The two inner columns connect components horizontally. And that split down the center makes it easy to place an IC on a breadboard while keeping its pins electrically isolated from one another. The two columns of holes along the sides are connected vertically. This makes it much easier to distribute power and ground to all those components in the middle. Keep in mind that each outer column is separated from one another. In fact, they can be removed entirely. If we decide we also want power on the other side of the board, we'll need to use wires to jump those connections from one side to the other. In fact, we use jumper wires whenever we need to connect a breadboard's internal conductors. You can buy pre-made jumper wires like these, but it's easy to make your own using 22 gauge solid core wire. Just estimate the length you'll need, adding a little extra space for the tips which have to enter the board. Clip and strip the wire tips and commence jumping. That's it. Avoid using stranded wire, as it doesn't really work so well. You can find a lot of components which are breadboard friendly, meaning that their lead spacing matches up nicely with a breadboard, so they pop right into place. Breadboards are great for experimenting, but once you're happy with how it works, you'll probably want to transfer your circuit to something a bit more permanent. In that case, we can use a perf board. There are many different types available, but at the most basic level, a perf board is a perforated board, providing a grid of holes, usually surrounded by metal pads, which you can securely solder components to. Most perf board has the same hole spacing as a breadboard, which is convenient. And to make transferring our circuit even easier, we can use a permaproto board, which has its pads pre-connected in the same configuration as our breadboard so we can place all our components in the same spots they were before. When placing a component on the board, bend its leads outward to secure it in place while soldering. IC pins are much shorter, but the same technique applies for them as well. Just bend each of the corner pins outwards. No need to bend them all. Because perf board gives us access to the bottom side of our circuit, we can use the long component leads themselves to make some of the connections which we needed jumpers for before. Just bend the lead over, and solder its end to wherever it needs to connect. Voila! Our circuit is now complete on a soldered permaproto board. And our breadboard is free to do other things. Hey Colin, so what you building there? Uh, it's an Atari Punk console. How cute! So, what's it do? It makes irritating 
noises. Really? Really. Uh, our next step would be to move this over to a printed circuit board that we designed. But really, that's a whole other video. Another time.